Working on a Cub Cadet CC30. Little rear engine rider this morning. It's the same as a lot of the Troy Built and Craftsman models. There's not much difference to any of them. The H behind on the CC30H I think might just be the hydrostat. I'm not sure. That's what I originally thought this was when I was pulling it in. Got a battery charger on it. The battery was a little bit low. We're going to let it charge up for a while. See if that takes care of that issue. Uh, this thing will start sometimes. Run for a very short time and kind of uh, just die back out. So we're going to show you what to do to figure out exactly what the issue is with that. So uh, very first thing I like to do is check the spark on it. I'm going to just throw a spark tester on it. Uh, if you're at home and don't have a spark tester, you know, we use a spark checker, but you can take out the plug and hold it against the block while you turn it over and watch for the spark. You should see it uh, really strong at the tip of the electrode. So we're showing good spark here. Now, if we weren't getting good spark, you would want to, um, you can disconnect the kill switch up front and figure out if it's your coil or if it's one of your safeties. Normally if these things are turning over, they're gonna have spark unless your ignition coil's bad as a general rule of thumb on these smaller units. But there is a, uh, if you were just to disconnect the main wiring harness here, you can still turn this motor over and test the spark at that point. Now do note if it would start at that point, you're not going to be able to kill it because that kill switch is in your wiring harness there to the engine. But you can test for spark that way, and that just takes all of the kill of the whole wiring harness out of the equation by doing that. So a good thing to know there. Now, if your coil's bad, you can replace your coil. Uh, if it's not, you know, you can try a spark plug first, obviously. I mean, it's very rarely the issue, but every now and again it is. So start there. Um, next, we're gonna go ahead and check fuel supply. So this thing's got fuel in it. I'm not sure what kind of quality fuel or anything else. It's not our fuel. Now the customer, I gave him a quote on it. About a week later, I called and said, hey, what do we wanna do here? And he actually brought in a new carburetor because that's what I quoted is either that it needed clean or re rebuilt or replaced. Wouldn't really know until I got, you know, further into it, but So he brought a, a new aftermarket carbon. Now you don't have to take that out. I'm just I guess kind of preparing here, but we're gonna throw some uh, starting fluid in it here carburetor cleaner Gum out and just go ahead and see if it fires up on that now if it fires up on the gum out we know That we're either a not getting fuel or B, not getting a good quality fuel, or C, there's a bunch of water or something else in the fuel. So it fires right up on carburetor cleaner. So that's basically bypassing the whole fuel system at that point. Now, if it doesn't start, you've got spark, you've got your uh, uh, fuel, you can keep moving the choke back and forth. Sometimes it'll be flooded out or something like that. But if it won't start at that point, you're gonna wanna go ahead and check your valves. Um, a lot of times it could be a bent push rod or something like that. You can open the valve cover and see kind of what everything else looks like in there. We've got a few videos, you know, on that kind of thing, but uh, nothing on this particular model. Maybe when we get one with that issue one day, we'll... Uh, get you a good one on that but so this thing does in fact you know and we've kind of diagnosed this at some point i believe i don't know it's been a little while ago but at some point we've figured out that this thing needed the carb cleaned rebuilt or replaced and again the customer did bring a new aftermarket carburetor but i'm going to show you how to clean this one if we need to we can replace it he brought a kippa brand I don't really normally use Kippa as I've had a few bad experiences with them. Um, nothing anytime recent, but I've had customers want to use them before and just not had real good luck. But uh, there is one 10 millimeter bolt here or nut here, and there's two on the front, and that gets this assembly out of the way here. But in order to get this carburetor off, you do need to take this uh, guard off the back. So that means the two two bolts here have to come out. 
There's not one on this side apparently. And then the whole assembly just flips up and out. And that's one of those. And we got two on the side. These are flange. So they've got kind of a spacer there that holds in the plastic. When you put them back together, you want to make sure that those go and line up real well. And then you've got two half inch. There's actually two half inch on each side to get this out of the way. I normally just take the, uh, take the top ones on each side off. So if you take the top one on both sides, you can just pull this back out of the way. And it comes back just far enough that you can pull this up and out. Now, if you have any problem with that, whatsoever you can go ahead and take the other two off and this comes completely out of the way at that point wow he's seen some better days down in in here all kinds of pine needles and everything else i think this thing's been sitting for a while it looks like so that is a good indication that this carburetor is probably going to be pretty well gummed up but anyway we'll go ahead and get it the rest of the way out grab my bucket to get the fuel drain down into we start going now on here a lot of people will take this whole cover off uh, take the whole seat off and the whole thing to get to it i don't mess with any of that in my opinion there's no reason to take any of that off this flips up easy enough that you can pull this off now no is it ideal absolutely not but if you pull this up it will be able to slide out of there. Otherwise, I mean, you're gonna spend another half an hour, 45 minutes taking all that stuff apart for absolutely no reason. Trust me, I've done it <laughs> way too many times before I learned I could finagle that around and get it out of there. These things have been around for quite a while. Worked on hundreds of them. Um, not exactly the best quality, but for what they are, you know, there's really nothing else out there anymore. Snapper used to make a good rear engine rider. Uh, Simplicity used to make a little rear engine rider, but as far as I know, there's not really a whole lot else in competition with it. And these things are pricey. I think they're 2,200 bucks or something like that right now. Let me get the fuel line off. Now, if you have a hard time taking it off, you can go ahead and grab and twist before you um, finish taking it off. I gonna say, it almost looked dry there at first when I was going to take it off. I was kind of worried that there wasn't any fuel in it, but obviously we checked that at some point, but it's uh, pretty varnish looking. Now on here, to take this off the rest of the way, see if I can't get a little bit uh, closer look while I show you what I like to do. So the choke rod comes back to here and it also goes to the choke. Now, what I've found easiest on this is to just go ahead and remove the butterfly of the choke and take the choke rod up and out. So I just grab it with a pair of pliers and pull it straight out. Wow, that was a pretty good, pretty good spin there we had. <laughs> that was fun. But anyway, I just grabbed it just like such and pulled it straight out of there. So. It'll go back in exactly the same way. You can keep it, you know, kind of how you, in the orientation that that was, but that was pretty cool there anyway with the uh, uh, spinning going on. There we go. Now we're gonna take this basically straight up and out at that point. So it's gonna come up. Now, do note there is a spring. I'll show you how all that goes back in though. But if you pull it up, so that comes all out just like such. Now when it goes back in, it'll go just like that. This little tab here will sit on the tab right behind the carburetor or right behind the choke. But that gets all this out of the way without having to take a bunch of stuff off again. So in my opinion, the easiest way to do it, I'm gonna take that choke rod and just let it hang. And from there, the carburetor comes towards you and then the spring will come off. 
So I like to use needle nose for that. Use those same needle nose that you were using and grab the spring first. Just pull it up and out. And then the throttle piece. If you pull it all the way to low throttle and pull the carb towards you, it comes up and out of there also. That's all good. And now your carb besides your two pieces here, which this is just a little tab that if you pull uh, the little tabs on the side out just a tiny bit at the same time you're pulling on it. Oh wow, well that disconnected there from the carburetor, so that's no good. Broke that, so this one's not exactly going to be a good one to clean. We'll still show you how to clean it. We're going to open this and everything else. Again, the customer did bring one for us to replace it, but so that's supposed to just come out of there easy. Uh, normally does. Apparently I pulled a little bit harder, harder something on it. And then you got one 5 16th or eight millimeter here at the back for the ground. Now you wanna pay attention to where that screw goes because it's a, it's an important one. You're gonna have to have that ground back on there in order to get your unit to run again. So at that point, the whole carburetor pulls straight out. Now, sometimes the tire is kind of in the way, it will always move out, so no big deal there. Let's see what this carburetor looks like inside. Alright, so the carburetor. I always like to mark these uh, before I take them apart, just to show where it's going back together. Sometimes you forget, it makes it real easy when you put it back together, if you just put I just put a couple scratches there. Note the orientation of the bowl because it can go on all the way around. Not seeing anything too bad yet. Yep, that was pretty yellow. Oh yeah, the whole thing's completely varnished up at the bottom down in there. Just smells horrid coming out. You can take the pin out for the float and remove the needle and seat. That's what's stuck down in there and it is actually stuck. So it's not letting anything else through right now. If your needle's stuck, the easiest way to get it out without removing it is just grab it here and you're gonna twist from side to side. So just grab it and twist, yep. And that brings it up and out. So we've got ethanol buildup all down on the shaft of this here see how that is all over now that any of that stuff in where the needle and seat is going to stick it's going to stick all down along there so oh wow look at all that ethanol build up so i'm not going to clean this carburetor that's just it's you're going to end up with too much time and effort into this where replacing it is going to be the cheaper option which becomes the case on a lot of these a lot of times now i will show you what you're going to need to clean should you need to clean this though now this all the way up and down that's got to be 100 percent clean there should be nothing on there especially at the ridges and then if this rubber is damaged at all or anything like that this has got to be replaced at least the needle in the seat now by the time you get a rebuild kit on this thing it's going to be cheaper to replace it again a lot of these are just going to throwaways if you get a good flat screwdriver down the middle it's got to be wide enough that it doesn't strip that brass out especially if they're um real varnished up real gummed up now i usually just kind of push together on it and spin straight through the middle and it usually will come right out now if you don't push a lot of times what you'll do is you'll damage that brass right away you'll never get that uh, main jet to come out of there well that went flying across the room so that's good uh, the emulsion tube is straight down through you can see it coming up if it's getting stuck you can just kind of push it down so that came out we'll grab that main jet real quick over here always like to fly on you when you're tapping them like that but otherwise they don't like to come out of there so let's see okay it doesn't look horrible horrible straight up through there but all these jets so if you're going to clean this you want to take a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a piece of a wire loom. I'll just pull it out here, or a piece of a wire brush. And I'll use all these little pieces. 
and clean all down through here. You can use carb cleaner. We use the gum out. It's just a little less nauseous. You want both sides of that completely clean. You want each and every one of these holes down through here. They'll go all the way through on each side. Clean all those out. Clean down through the emulsion tube. So we like to use torch tip cleaners for that, you know, and you just kind of run them down through, work it back and forth until everything's out of there. This, this and this are the most important parts of this whole carburetor along with where the needle and the seat sits. This will cause it to stick and it'll flood your crankcase with fuel or you won't get any fuel at all um, if it's not working properly. And this will make it run like crap if it's not working properly. All down through here around the edges will need to be cleaned completely up. Now, that's why in this case it's going to be way less, or way less uh, time consuming and costly to just go ahead and replace this because getting all the stuff out of there chances are slim to none now don't get me wrong we've got an ultrasonic cleaner we could throw it in there forever but it almost gets an oxidation or something on that brass um, that'll still cause it to stick at points in times you also want to clean the pilot jet that's up under here now if you remove your move your governor stop here and then your little plastic piece just pops straight up pilot jet pops straight out now it is basically just a jet that goes straight down through. Now if you don't clean this, it'll make it surge real bad. So you should be able to see it go through as you're poking down in there. Make sure there's not a bunch of green gum or varnish in there. A lot of times that'll happen also. And then I, what I usually like to do is go ahead and take the uh, solenoid off here and clean where it comes out. Now that's a little bit more uh, of a precautionary thing but they get a lot of gum and, and varnish and stuff down in there if you don't get them cleaned out and then if that sticks or if it's not working your unit's not going to work anyway so well that doesn't want to work quite right if i can't get it with a pair of pliers here yeah, half inch uh, wrench i believe it's going to take it's a little bit less than a half maybe a 12. It's all metric stuff, so yep, 12 millimeter. Get that taken out. I'm gonna go ahead and put it down here and just, it's not working real well either. It was really in there. So if you take your after fire solenoid out, and all this does, yeah, see it's seized. That should be pushing in. Again, we're gonna we're not doing anything with this, but this should move freely in and out. So if you're gonna if you're gonna clean this, you're gonna want to make sure that all that gunk and stuff is out of there. Otherwise, this won't retract. So what happens is when you power it up, it retracts and comes down and allows fuel in there. It'll allow your fuel up through into your main jet. If that does not retract, it will not allow anything in. It plugs up that hole down through there. So. Make sure that's nice and clean. Everything in the bowl. Basically, this thing needs to be spotless before it goes back together if you're going to put it back together. And that does include down through here. You don't want anything left over. Otherwise, you're going to run into issues. Now, we are going to open the new carburetor that they provided. And we're going to take a look. Now, there's many reasons for this. Um, we've got another video on it. Just kind of what to look for and why you should open it. There's a hair wrapped around it. I'm not sure where that came from. Now, I'm not really seeing anything in this one or anything like that, but um, you will notice that the uh, needle on this is a little bit different. A little bit different of a design. I'm going to go ahead and just, just let that float drop a little bit more. And what you do to do that is just barely bend that tab back out because it didn't seem like it was quite coming down far enough. I like it to come down a little further. And then you want it to start sealing a little bit before it goes up. Um, so we can actually, you can just barely push that tab down in also. So that's about where you want it. You want it to start sealing about right there. That way it has good tension on it when it's coming up. And you want it to be able to open enough to get good fuel in it. So I think we're about okay right there. Should give us good tension on that spring. Good spring tension on the uh, needle there as it's coming back up and give us plenty of fuel as we're going in. 
Now, again, I didn't, uh, I didn't mark this as it was coming off. I do know which way it goes, but if you mark those, like I did on this one, before you take it off, you'll never question which way it goes. You'll always know that those line up just like they're supposed to, and then that's where your solenoid goes, the same way as your fuel comes out. Just one of those things that keeps you from questioning things, keeps you from putting things back together wrong if you're not familiar with these. And I mean, it can happen to any of us. It's really easy to forget, you know, oh, hey, which way does that go back on? And then you run into an issue. So I think everything in there looked good. Next, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing installed. All right, so we're ready to put this thing back together. I did go ahead and replace the intake gasket. Now, by replacing it in this case, what I meant is I just doubled it up. See, the back one uh, had not ripped or torn off at all. It's in halfway decent shape and it doesn't want to come off easily. So doubling it up isn't gonna hurt anything. Just gonna give you a brand new seal against it and the other one's still in good shape. There's no pieces of it or anything on the other one here. So it came off 100% clean, you know, without any rips or tears. That's not going to hurt anything whatsoever. We did go ahead and blow the tank completely out. It's completely dried. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll put some carb cleaner through it, blow it out with compressed air real well, and that'll just keep it, uh, it'll dry out real quick. And then we went ahead and put a new fuel filter on here. So fuel system's completely clean and dry. All ready to go in that aspect. So as far as the new carburetor remember we took this out so you can see here where the where the choke spring goes it sits right along the uh, right over the tab there so you're going to want it to go just like just back like that and it should spring back to open so in order for this one to do the same we're just going to take that straight out sometimes they're kind of a pain i like to use really just snips a lot of times it makes it easier if you just kind of grab them and pull it'll come straight out of there so you keep it in that orientation that's the way it goes back in just like such once we get it on there to get a little bit of dirt right there and all over my hands it looks like but and then again this just comes straight up there it doesn't have all those washers and stuff like the other one does on this but we'll just push it to the side so we're going to go ahead and get this on first get the linkage back on now it's pretty easy if you just hang it out to the side and push it straight down in. So if you pull it, I like to pull the whole thing at once and just kind of push it straight down in. Now it should spring back and then you can get the spring back on. Now you can do that either way. A lot of times I like to get the spring on first. Just seems a little bit easier that way, but either way it's not too difficult of a task to get on there. So uh, I'll show you that just a little bit closer here if I can. So, governor comes up and in. So if it's sitting at an angle, I'll just take it back out and do it again. That'll make it easier for us to see. Now the spring came off the back side over here. No big deal, but now I've got to put it back in real quick. Kind of easy with a pair of needle nose on the back. Right, so, you grab the whole thing again, and you just come and you set it straight down in there. So that's in, and then you can get your spring in. Came off the back side again, darn it. Never usually have that issue. And there's just a hole right under the other linkage, so it's not hard to go back in. I'm not going to really worry about showing you that. should be able to figure out where that one goes should you have any issues. But that just goes right back in, just like such. And then the whole card pushes straight back in. And we're not going to go too far at this point. All we want to do is put our linkage back in real quick. So, let me get a little further away, so I'm not bumping us real bad. The linkage is in the hole in the back here, at an angle, and then comes up. So this is going to go straight in like such. And you got to make sure the spring, the spring should be on, and it's kind of hooked in this tab over here. 
and it will come and go straight down in. You gotta be far enough in there for it to do it, but then I like to turn it past and get that latched, latched in and then the black piece comes down to where it's on the other side. So now if you push it, it should come that way and then spring back. Not really sure why it's not, it looks like maybe someone's messed with the, oh okay, because it's not all the way back is why it wasn't wanting to, wanting to go all the way I guess. Well, maybe not. That should, I'm going to put this linkage in there real quick and we'll address that. I'll show you what, what exactly is going on here. It looks as so that somebody's messed with it at some point and maybe tried to fix it. No, I bet the choke's on right now. That makes sense. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I was kind of confused there for a second, but the choke was just on. Now, as you put it back in, same orientation you took it out. The notch goes to the bottom, flat part to the left. Now that should go to choke and should spring back open. So that's all good. Now we want to go ahead and hook up our two connections here. The one just slides together and clips. Now we did bend these out a little bit to take it apart. You can bend those back. They're just little tabs to keep it connected. You don't want to mangle them too much. You want them to stay connected at a good, good connection there. Oh, okay. Apparently the ignition switch is still on too. I was getting a little bit of uh, a little bit of sound there from it as the ground was hitting. So getting this all connected, you just want that pushed down in securely. It is at this point. It's all good there. So hopefully you can see that well. I'll move over this way just a little bit. Get a little better view. I'm just putting that in, got it in all the way, and now we can go ahead and hook up our ground wire. So that's a 5 16th or an 8 millimeter again. And it will just go straight through and into the back. Now if you don't know what you're doing, you may want to start that by hand or something like that. You don't want to strip it out, of course. And there's an engine bolt, so put our fuel line back on. Fuel line clamp. Now if that fuel line is cracking or anything, has any bad spots in it, dry rotted, you're going to want to replace it at this time. You're already here, so kind of silly not to. All right, so we're ready to put everything back together how it was. Now on the front, it's kind of the same deal. This thing is uh, in good shape. I don't really see any issues with it. It's not going to hurt to just double up another one. Now that's not going to make a big difference whatsoever. That's kind of a weird gasket. That just saves you all the trouble of scraping the, these off. I mean, they are in perfect shape, so it's really pointless. Now if they've got spots or anything out of them where they're in bad shape, you will want to scrape those off and go ahead and replace it. We do it when we need to, but try to, try to take the practical, practical approach as much as we can. And it's just not practical or needed for any, any reason. It's not going to deteriorate sitting there. So put our ones back on the front. So the carburetor's all back together. Now we haven't put, you know, the rest of it back together at this point, but you can test it right now if you'd like. You can go ahead and put everything, you know, put some fuel in it and fire it on up. We're gonna finish putting it back together first. I'm confident enough that it's gonna run well, but we're gonna do that. And I wanna show you all those steps of doing it, so. Uh, this, you really wanna kinda blow everything out of there. Don't want to leave that stuff all down in there, even though it's not really the primary concern we have right now. But so that just slides back down in. You got your other bolts that go on here, and those are the flange ones again. Two 
two flange bolts. And we got the half inch bolts for the support bracket here. slides back in and then the bolt on the bottom normally again it's two bolts this one was missing one a lot of them are that little plastic just breaks really easily up under there yeah it looks like that one not sure if it's broken or not I'm too worried about it though just more or less a beauty piece at this point I'm gonna get some fuel in this thing and we'll fire it on up Again, make sure no matter what you're doing, whether you're cleaning, rebuilding, replacing, whatever you're doing with the carburetor, you're going to want to make sure that you're putting fresh fuel in it. If you're not putting fresh fuel in it, you're going to run into an issue real quick. Looks like for some reason my fuel filter's leaking over here, so that's no good. Just throw a new one on real quick here so I was paying attention as it was coming and my fuel filter started leaking again I don't really know what happened there but get a new one on it and move on it only takes a second but all the uh, fuel line and everything around it looked good shape so all right I think we got that stopped at this point Put the cap back on and fire this thing up Choke it goes. running just great for some reason that I don't the fuel filter is still kind of leaking there I don't know if there's a bad spot in the line or what we'll address that here in just one second it almost seems like this clamp isn't quite tight enough always check for leaks a fuel leak can start you a fire real quick in any situation you always want to inspect that if you're having issues with the uh, thing running after you get your car back on uh, a lot of times it's going to be an air leak in between the carburetor and the block so if you're spraying in between the carburetor and the gasket here uh, you can spray just with some carbon choke cleaner spray all around so if you were to spray you know on the bottom side here and then all the way around you want to make sure you're not getting it up where the choke or where the throttle rod is because it can suck in some there but if you're running changes at all when you're spraying around there you know that you have an air leak and that's an issue so also down in between the plastic insulator you can see kind of that green gasket back there you can spray down in that area now if the running changes at all when you're spraying in there it goes high or low when you spray a lot of it like it's choking out or like it starts running good you know that there's an air leak you know that uh, that gasket is not good or not sealing against those things sometimes the plastic warps uh, that causes a lot of issues and just again make sure it's good gas that you're putting in it ethanol free is what we recommend that'll keep you running great but should give you all the info you need to know to get your uh, cc30 or cc30h uh, any of the craftsman or troy built 30 inch riding mowers back up into action and ready to go for the year thanks for watching like and subscribe